the, we were delighted to be asked by Carrie Crane, who runs their, um, the exhibits here, to be a participant in putting artwork in their gallery. Carrie is an artist himself. He's an MFA member, and he has exhibited in, in a number of our exhibitions. Um, and it's been a great partnership. It's a, a wonderful facility down here. If you've never been, never been here, I highly encourage it. They bring the best of even the prehistory of the Bay, the history of the Bay and the future of the Bay all in one facility on the water. It's gorgeous. It's especially gorgeous today. Um, and I'm gonna ask Rochelle Green who uh, is with Calvert Marine Museum to speak for a minute about the museum and what they do. Hi, welcome everyone. Thank you for being here with us. Um, it is uh, my pleasure uh, to have Joanne and Maryland Federation of Art um, here at the Marine Museum. Um, thank you so much for that lovely introduction. Um, I am the deputy director here at the museum. And again, I just wanna thank MFA, um, our juror, Jack Russman, um, and all of our artists for sponsoring and participating in the show. Um, our museum celebrates three distinct fields relative to the Chesapeake Bay, paleontology, estuarine biology, and maritime history. And the work selected in the show exemplify our mission and dedication to the environment. We are thrilled to offer an art show at the museum. The bright, vibrant colors have ushered us into spring and filled our hearts with hope at this, as we navigate this very difficult time. So I wanna thank you again and congratulations to all of the artists. Um, and I hope to see you all here as you enjoy your show. Thank you. And I think you can tell in Rochelle's voice the passion for what she does. And I found that true with everybody here, that they really view this as an educational resource for the community and for the state. Um, and like I said, I highly encourage anybody who can to come. Um, before I introduce the juror, Jack Rasmussen, uh, he had an exceptionally hard job with this. If you are an artist who is in the show, congratulations. Out of 574 pieces, Jack, who I think is the ultimate juror's juror, selected 30. So it was a very tough field. It was a tough crowd. And I was really, really thrilled that we had a juror of Jack Rasmussen's talent and uh, experience to curate an exhibition like this. As many of you know, he is the director and curator of the, Amer at the American University Museum at the Katz and Arts Center. He's also extremely well known throughout Maryland for his participation in a number of different arts organizations, as well as current service on the Maryland State Arts Council. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Jack. Jack, thank you so much for giving us your time and your talent for this exhibition. Well, thank you, Joanne. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Calvert Marine Museum, by the way. That's a wonderful place. I've been out there several times and I'm looking forward to coming out in the next couple of weeks to enjoy the weather and, and, the, and the collection and this show. Uh, the, this, uh, during the show was great because it really allowed me to imagine that I had escaped from my basement for a time. It was a really a, a, a nice antidote to the, uh, to the pandemic and the cold, dark days of February. Uh, the 574 entries were full of life and light, a celebration of nature that uh, led me to believe that spring would be coming, grass would be growing, and baseball was around the corner. After three weeks of uh, Nationals games, uh, excuse me, the last three Nationals games, I may start wishing for the return of winter, but <laughs> for the best. Uh, during the jurying process, I encountered works of art that exhibited great technical prowess, emotional intelligence, and clear-eyed observations of internal and external reality. The 30 artworks I selected for the show all have these three qualities in abundance representing real artistic achievement. I can't wait to see this show in person. Making decisions based on digital representations of the actual entries always makes for surprises when the exhibition opens. I hope these will be happy surprises and that you will enjoy seeing the show as much as I enjoyed making my choices. Now, it was very difficult to comb through the 574 entries. I keep saying that number because it's very impressive. 
and slowly whittle that number down to 30. But the good news is I understand we have a great show and I uh, can't wait to see it. Uh, more difficult still was to pair the 30 works in the exhibition further to come up with four honorable mention awards and five jurors choice awards. Uh, let me again mention the uncertainty of judging living, breathing works of art only through digital images on a computer monitor where they are all the same size and texture and even smell or lack of smell. So allow me to apologize for all the mistakes I have made in the jurying process that might have resulted in your work not being included in the show or resulting in your work missing out on an award that you should have been, that should have been yours. I blame it on the pandemic. But if your work did receive an award, then I am sure it was richly deserved. I hope you're here so we can celebrate virtually together. Above all, I hope we can have a conversation. I don't really need to hear myself talk. I want to talk to you. <clears throat> So, Laura, can you bring up the first honorable mention? Along the River by David Diaz. Um, what a great way to start this program. Uh, what a beautifully impostoed sky, a sunset or a sunrise along the river where I would really like to be right now. David Diaz has another landscape in this show that could also have won a prize but I tried to give only one to a customer. Uh, believe me, there are many deserving artists who could not be included in this show. And uh, I'm sorry about that, but uh, how nice to have uh, this painting in it. Uh, David, are you around? I know you're around, but will you, yes. will you speak yes. to us? Yes. Uh, Laura. Uh, Did I say a nice, nice things? chat uh yeah uh, can you hear me yes yeah. i can oh okay good thing i was i was mumbling around thinking uh yeah you said nice things thank you <laughs> i uh it, th this is a spot down here off of the water off actually the bay area a uh, little out the cove one day uh wonderful uh, and thank you for because uh, I, I I installed the show so I saw all the other really fine work so thank you very much for the honorable mention. It was my pleasure. Okay, Laura, next slide. Pine Top Two, I guess it's two, right? Uh, by Susanna Hartshorn and Lynch. Another wonderful landscape, in this case, just a treetop, but so effective and another place I'd really like to be, up in a tree, apparently. Uh, don't you love good painting? I can't wait to see this. Uh, I think it's great from what I can tell. Uh, again, it's a, it's a, it's a diff problem of translation, but uh, it sure looks good from here. Is uh, Susanna here? I don't think so. I don't see her. Huh. Would anybody like to impersonate her? <laughs> okay. All right. Let's go to the next slide. Ooh. Back of the Hog uh, by Al Naiman. This is literally the back of the hog. Uh, the hog in, in Al Naiman's hands, what sounds like a rather uninspirational subject for a work of art becomes a wonderful presentation of the feel of hair and skin on one of our fellow mammals and this amazing monochromatic photograph of baby back ribs. Is, uh, is Al around? Yes. Yes, I'm here. I'm uh, just putting my screen on. Um, that oh, is well, your photograph, right? This is, um, I'm considering another name for it. Um, and I've con considered quite a few names for it, such as Hogsback. But as we all, all of us English speakers know, that has a different meaning entirely. Hogsback is a type of a hill. It has nothing to do with them. And I'm still considering hog's hair. If, um, if I have the chance to print this again or show it again, I might call it 
the hawk's hair. Because I, I like the alliteration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I like the I like the photograph. Um, oh, yeah. I I do. I, I come back to it frequently, and as as I can with with uh, with some art, certainly more than my own art. Others that I I do like to come back to and look at again and again. Mm -hmm. Everyone really likes the hair, and of course, uh, someone who knows better than I said, you know, it's really very coarse hair too. It all it looks soft and it looks like it would be smooth, but it's quite coarse. Is uh, most of your work in black and white? Is no, this black? No, and white? not not most, but like so many. Um, people my generation, uh, we were weaned on uh, the dark room, you know, uh, going to the dark room was um, something you did in the 60s. It was another one. They used to have these experiences called trips, you know, remember? And yeah. going into the dark room uh, for hours and hours and, and um, was uh, how I learned to do black and white. So that's how I that's how I started, and of course, printing pictures. Even even the photo mats in those days did um, black and white, primarily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, so is this from this is an emulsion, you know, photograph? No, it's not. This is a um, this. Well, what you're of course what you're seeing here is a digital file, a JPEG. Uh, but I did have it printed with on an it's an archival digital print with. Uh, archival type inks, Epson inks, uh, which are, time will tell uh, if they are as good as the silver uh, and the platinum, those uh, media, mm -hmm. uh, some of which, many of which still look really great, I have to admit that I did way back when. And we'll see how this one holds up. Great, well, it's a wonderful photograph. Thank, Thank you. you again. Sure. Okay, Laura, next slide. Mist in the Forest by Jennifer E. Kish. Um, what a beautifully rendered landscape. Uh, the atmosphere, the mist, makes me homesick for the rainforests of Washington State's Olympic Peninsula. Although that's, this is not a rainforest or the Olympic Peninsula, but uh, I can relate. I do want to see the paint handling up close, uh, maybe steal a few ideas, uh, but uh, Really a beautiful painting. Is Jennifer around? I am, I'm, I'm on my husband's computer, but I am here. Uh, thank you. It's one of the few mornings that I managed to get up early and I saw the mist uh, in the forest behind the house. You should get up early more often. <laughs> so, so that's a local, uh, a local landscape. Yes, mm -hmm. I live here in a, Pennsylvania, northeastern Pennsylvania. Ah, okay, okay. And is this uh, a su subject uh, you often do, uh, except for the early morning part? Uh, actually, it was one of my first ever tree paintings. I'm a little afraid to paint trees. Wow, well, you pulled <laughs> it off, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that is difficult, uh, but you did a really, I think, remarkable translation into paint. Thank you. Hard to do. Hmm. Oh, Laura, next slide. Okay, we are now in the uh, Juror's Choice Awards. And this is Q View Number One by Mitch Eckert. And this is such a knockout. I just love this. I'm not quite sure why. I mean, it's, uh, it's such a mystery. Um, and, and, and so subtle and, and really it's kind of a, a photograph, an empty photograph and yet it's so full of, uh, you know, uh, possibilities. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering, is Mitch Eckert's here? Yes, he is. I'm here, yep. Great, so uh, I liked all, the, all your photographs but I really like this one. What, what am I looking at? Oh, thanks, Jack. Um, and thanks for, for jurying. It's a, it sounds like a, a daunting task to, wade through so many images. Um, so you're looking at, at the exterior view of um, one of the greenhouses in Kew Garden um, in London. And 
yeah, specifically it's the uh, the lily pad um, house mm -hmm. and uh, what I did was a series of, of work looking at the um, uh, botanic garden from the outside in um, essentially yeah wow and and I I, I love the um... Yeah, emptiness is the wrong word, but it's like there's so little there and there's so much there. I don't know. So it's a really wonderful play, I think. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, uh, this is the only one of the photographs I think that you entered are that are of sort of this kind of uh, viewing through a, uh, a, a fogged up surface. Yeah, it's, uh, it's part of an ongoing um, project that I've been uh, since 2012, kind of um, periodically looking into. Ah, very good. Okay, Laura, next slide. Well, this is Spring, Girls with Snowdrops and Robins by Eileen Kennedy. Uh, Eileen's another uh, artist uh, who had another entry that could have won this prize as well. I. I think she's a, a wonderful painter. I can't wait to see it in person, of course. I, I attempted a few egg tempera paintings myself in graduate school. I, I left them half finished in my locker at American University. And when I came back after the Christmas vacation, they had been eaten. Uh, right. <laughs> so uh, I took it as a compliment, you know, to good taste, I guess. But, uh, but yeah, I, I love the technique and I, I really can't wait to get up close and personal with these. Is, uh, is Eileen Kennedy here? Uh, yes, I'm here. Thank Hi, you. Um, so th this is um, actually, there were four in the series. I actually did the four seasons um, featuring uh, flora and fauna. I live in coastal Monmouth County, New Jersey. So there it's all flora and fauna, of course, with figures of things that I ma mainly saw in my childhood growing up. So um, the, these, this series are done really um, sort of out of my head. Mm -hmm. And then I would just, you know, refer to um, photographs or the real thing, you know, to, to, get, to get the, uh, the plants and the, usually birds uh, correct, <laughs> mm -hmm. anatomically correct. So, but I had a lot of fun painting yeah. that one, so. Well, and the, and the young women too are really wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, I had a lot of fun, like, po you know, the, the whole, across the whole series, so the, everything's sort of, they're all the same scale, and just finding interesting poses, that's the one good thing when you're drawing out of your head and not using models, you can sort of pose them any way you want. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well, you, you did get away with it. I mean, they, they're pretty convincing, so, and, and wonderfully stylized, so. Thank you, thank you very much. Great, thank you. Um, next, Almost by Sandra M. Um, I wanna see this one in person too. Uh, uh, it, it's a tiny little thing, but it reads so grand like a Matisse uh, collage on the ceiling and maybe of a cathedral, I mean, it's, uh, really has that feeling. Uh, and I know that wax can do wonderful things uh, with light. So uh, here we see a great design and a lovely, lovely color harmony, but I'm sure there's so much more we're missing uh, by not being there. So I'll, I would, I would come, come to the Calvert Marine Museum just to see this piece, I think, and uh, be surprised, I'm sure. Is uh, Sandra here? Or Sandra? Sandra? Is Sandra here? I don't think so. Okay. Too bad. She's too bad. She's a wonderful artist. We've we've seen. She had two um, wood sculptures in a in the gallery earlier this year. Huh. So she works in a variety of different media. So yeah. it's always fun to hear what she's up to. Oh, great, great. So. So Laura, next slide. So uh, 
<clears throat> Standing Tall by Rhonda Ford. Again, only one of the two great submissions by Rhonda Ford. Had a hard time uh, choosing, uh, but they're both are proof that flower painting can still be uh, very alive, contemporary, vital in the hands of the right artist. Um, and uh, I love the, uh, the painterly qualities that I think are going on here, as far as I can tell. Yes, thank you very much. Uh -huh. um, I have a, a whole fence line full of these irises, which are just getting close to blooming again. So maybe I'll do another painting. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Yeah, please do. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was very fun to do and a lot of palette knife, which I don't use a lot, but when I do, I am pleasantly happy with the results. So I think mm -hmm. I need to do it more. I was, I was wondering, where, where did you receive your training? Well, I went to College Park, University of Maryland College Park, but that was in the 70s. And then I did not do art for my working life. And I'm coming back to it in my retired time. So I've been back about three years into mm -hmm. actively painting. Well, they had a great faculty and a lot of great graduates of the University of Maryland at that time. Uh, yes, they, I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, yeah, who were your teachers? Oh gosh, you're really um, taxing my brain. Um, 50 years ago, let's, let's go. <laughs> I know, I, um, darn. Right That's now, okay. my mind is going blank because I've been trying to research that, but that was before internet times. So it's um, it's my memory trying to look things up. I just, uh, there was Taddeus Lipinski, but that was lithography. Yeah. And the one painting perf uh, instructor, I had his name recently, but now today I can't think of it, but it, it was a great, experience i loved it yeah, i was telling joanne that the etching behind me is by dan cooney uh who uh i think was at the university of maryland in the 60s uh, mm. with the tom green and they were so close that he called himself uh dan yellow <laughs> but uh yeah it was a great program yes and he, he lives out there in annapolis now too by the way ah all right, well, thank you. Sure, thank you. Okay, hey, mm. Laura, next slide. Uh, taken by <laughs> Megan Velvet Kunst. I wish I knew what the title refers to. Uh, the Liam Neeson movie, maybe, <laughs> or uh, taking this gorgeous rendering of a cactus plant from the natural world and juxtaposing it with an interior world of abstract patterns. Um, anyway, the juxtaposition seems to be saying something important, and uh, I'm, I can't wait to see it in person and have uh, and spend a little time thinking about it. Is the, uh, is the artist here? I am. Hi. Hi. Um, yeah, so with the title, I was actually thinking about just how, you know, the concept of house plants has kind of originated, like, that we've taken them from their like natural yeah. habitat, I guess. Um, I have so many house plants, but it's kind of weird to think they all live on my windowsill, but they've originated from so many different places. So that's just kind of what I was thinking about. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I know um, because I, I have uh, uh, Latin relatives that uh, in the Caribbean, if you have a, a cactus plant in your house, you'll never get married. So <laughs> I don't know if that happened, but just saying. Well, that's funny. I, I have gotten married, so okay, good. <laughs> my husband's here. <laughs> <laughs> good. Good. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a beautiful piece. As I say, it's really, really interesting too. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, well, those are our award winners. It's fun to hear from people about 
you know, everything from why you named something to what the inspiration was. Um, it was very fun listening to everybody talk. I wanted to say Al Naiman's piece that when I first saw it here, I thought it was an abstract. Mm -hmm. And then you get closer to it and you obviously see with the name that it, it is the back of a hog, but you get further away again and it looks like uh, an abstract. Why don't you bring up uh, Eileen Kennedy's summer piece? Because I think it's very interesting. I didn't realize that she had all four seasons. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. In a series. So Eileen, I don't know if you wanted to oh. say anything else about this piece. So this is summer. So it's a woman with horseshoe crab. Um, I, I got, I used to work out on Sandy Hook, which is part of Gateway National Recreation Area. And I was, I was very involved with, um, I worked for a nonprofit coastal conservation organization. So uh, we were doing horseshoe crab conservation. So uh, this is, the bay um, at Sandy Hook in coastal Monmouth County, New Jersey. And um, so that was the first in the series that I did. And then I, I took it from there, so. Yeah, I've been out there for horseshoe crab mating season. That was- Oh yeah? Fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing when they all come up. It, actually, it's just starting, they're, they're starting to gear up now. They tag them so they can track yeah. them. And uh, I don't work for them anymore, but- um, mm -hmm. It, it's had an influence on me, <laughs> so. That would be weird, uh, finding a horseshoe crab with a little be beeper on it and tra tracking device. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, this is Melanie. Hi, Melanie. Hey. Hi. Uh, well, I would like to say I'm very flattered to be included in the show, so thank you. It was very tough competition if you look at the uh, ratio, so thank you very much. Um. Oh, is yours the blue crab? Yes, it is. What a wonderful painting. Yeah, I, I really, really like that. Well, I actually was inspired. I actually found this on the beach um, in North Jersey and just the colors like struck me. Mm -hmm. So um, I was inspired by the shadow that was on it. And, you know, just the blue and orange just really drew me to paint it, so. Where'd you go to school? Well, I've uh, taken classes various places, University of New Hampshire, um, and I am in MAPA, and I uh, paint a couple places in Pennsylvania that mm -hmm. currently are not open, so. I, I'm lucky enough to be a collector of Melanie's work. Ah. So I have one of her pieces. I am so flattered, Joanne. You know what, that is just great. <laughs> uh, Georgiana told me she saw you had it hanging. So yeah, that really when made Georgiana was good. in my house, she said, oh, I see Melody's work. So um, what, one of the side effects of my job is that you end up with a lot of artwork in your home. And yeah. Yeah, it's a I, piece I really like. I can attest to that. <laughs> so, it, but that paint handling is really, really wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. And once again, thanks for including me. I'm, sure. It makes me feel great to be included in the show. And I actually dropped the work in person. So I saw what a great venue it is. Well, um, this is a photograph I took on the uh, walking path through our community. And before COVID started, I was really making a lot of street photography. And I've always been interested in architectural photography. Hmm. So without being able to travel much, I started to think about what I could do in my immediate surroundings. And we did get a dog uh, just before the lockdown began um, last year. And this is the path I walk her on a number of times every day. And somebody else who spoke earlier said that she went out on a foggy morning. And this was a foggy morning about, I think it was late January. And it was so foggy and so dense that I, I like fog as a subject. I thought I would walk the dog and see what was out there. And I also had the advantage of knowing that this stretch of the path uh, headed towards the east, so I would get the sun silhouetting the trees and the uh, undergrowth. It's not a very attractive forest. It's not um, old growth, and it's a lot of locusts and um, other sort of what arborists sometimes call trash trees. It's not a very healthy forest, but in the mist with the light coming through from the east down the path as it is here, I thought it made a very evocative subject. So 
Um, this is pretty much it straight out of the camera with just a little, um, you know, touching up, uh, intensifying contrast and brightening the path itself. So it becomes a little more, um, a stronger element emotionally and compositionally to lead you into the distance. So that's what, it. What a great translation you made from the, the street and the architecture to, to this, you know, uh, natural path. I mean, really beautifully, beautifully done. Well, thank you. And thank you for including me. First of all, thank you for including me. It's always nice when um, an assemblage is included with these beautiful paintings and photographs. Um, I think it was the only one with found objects in the show. Yeah. Um, like Will, uh, this piece came about because of COVID. Uh, the gyms are closed and I started going for morning walks and runs and um, you know now we've gone through four seasons so I really noticed how quiet uh, it was uh, in the winter time and so I when I'm out walking I gather up things and uh, this uh, is here the whispers in the winter woods and for me that's the deer walking on the pine needles and the birds that are left uh, eating the berries, uh, whatever that creature was, uh, decaying, things like that. So it was uh, a challenge putting all these natural objects together. Well, wow, it's, a, it's a great piece, uh, really is. And, and, and you're right, you know, you, uh, I think there were uh, several sort of more three-dimensional uh, kind of found pieces uh, submitted, uh, but uh, this one is just really, really great, and uh, and it certainly succeeds in on every on every level that you would judge any work of art. And uh, so, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much for including me. I'm uh, very excited to be part of the show and can't wait to see it in person. Yeah, um, you and me both. So basically, this piece is one of several that I've made with, um, with this uh, texture and uh, glaze and it speaks to the forms of like lush vegetation when you're uh, when you're you know midsummer when you're uh, when everything is kind of overgrown and it also speaks to what you try to see through this lush vegetation shadows and uh, um, just the overall feeling that um, that I you know, I get when I'm hiking through nature and um, just surrounded by like this very lively vegetation. Mm -hmm. And uh, the volume kind of speaks to, uh, to like how, you know, how alive and, uh, um, I guess like very, uh, uh, lush things are, um, and uh, I don't know if you have any questions or um, would like me to talk about anything in particular about the piece. Well, I was so happy to see uh, uh, this this piece. I mean, it really is so uh, successful and so interesting. And there, as I said, there was very little sculpture in the show. Uh, but uh, this this is just a beauty. Thank and you so the much. Technique, I, I'm very curious about it, but uh, it's probably well, a secret. Basically, the way it was built, if this is of any interest to anyone, um, it is coil built, so um, it's a slow uh, process, and this allowed me to really, as as I was making it, think about the exact volume and curves, and uh, uh, so I, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing it in the show and uh, see how people react to it in terms of, uh, you know, a 3G uh, piece of work. And 
Well, I'm really happy to be part of this show. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I'm happy you're part of it. I've got a question, and I think this will go back to Eileen and maybe Jack. Um, but talking about the egg temp tempura process, what exactly does that entail? Um, Elaine Weiner-Reed, who's another artist, uh, she paints in oil and she is also a sculptor. She said that she would like to hear more about, about the technique. And I didn't know if anybody could explain it for those of us that don't know about it. I'd be happy to. Um, if um, it, It's basically you paint with um, pure pigment, powdered pigment and egg yolk. And you mix it and you can thin it with water once it's, once it's mixed. Um, I mix mine as I go. Um, if you if you see a close up of uh, you know an enlargement, it's hard to see here, but you could see that um, the entire painting is made up of little strokes uh, because of the ground that you use. You have to use a much more absorbent ground. You can't use acrylic gesso. You have to make your own the traditional rabbit skin glue and and chalk or I use marble dust. Um, it it dries instantly so you cannot blend so uh it's sort of like cross hatching in color um you you do the entire painting of of little marks like you could see in the trees and the sweaters and um and it's layers and layers and layers of of little marks that um all you know converge to you know to make to create the form and the only way to turn form, you know, to create volume is by gradually shifting the colors, um, you know, from, from one area to the next and uh, putting layers over them. Sometimes I, you can do things like you can sponge on some of the early layers, um, but um, just, just to get some coverage. Uh, this is an 18 by 18 um, inch piece and which is somewhat large for, for contemporary egg tempera. Um, but I painted probably the painting alone, not, not composition or drawings or anything, it was about four months of working 25 to 30 hours a week. So um, it's labor intensive, so. Yeah. Well, what do you make an hour? <laughs> yes, <laughs> negative. <laughs> That's uh, why I have a day job. <laughs> I like mean, any artist. <laughs> I mean, isn't it true that uh, oil painting was actually developed as a way of, you know, adding color to egg, over egg tempera. So those glazing effect that uh, the Van yeah. Eyck did, right? Yeah, this was, this was, um, this sort of, sort of once oil paint came in, they started out by doing underpaintings. Uh, you could see there are some artists, I forget which one, some of the, um, one of the, I don't think it's Filippo Lippi, but it's it's one you know of the the early Renaissance. You could see in their career they did just egg tempera. Then it was egg tempera underpaintings with oil glazes over, and then the shift was totally to oil and egg tempera. Really didn't come back until um, the 1800s. Uh, when the British started traveling <laughs> and, and so all of these, you know, the early masters and they started working in egg tempera and then that got brought to the US and Daniel Thompson uh, taught it at Yale and then people like George Tucker and uh, Jared French and Paul Cadmus came out of that mm -hmm. and through them, that's where Wyeth learned it, you know, it was like sort of this whole, you know, renaissance so, uh, so that's, that's basically how it's happening. I'm actually doing an online demonstration um, later this month with a local art society. I'll, I'll post you know, the, the link on my, my website if anybody's interested in- uh, I, Oh, I would be very interested. Finding Thank out you, about Eileen. it. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Eileen, thank you so much. Yeah. That was great. Okay. I don't see anybody else unmuted. Um, and if anybody else wants to speak, this is kind of like your last chance. This but is it. It is, I, it is worth a trip here. And I think um, just Eileen talking about her pieces, um, they, they are large. Everything does look, you know, they does look different in person. And the way that the show is hung is just beautiful. So we will have a video um, of the gallery up so you all can see what the art looks like in place. 
Uh, we also will be editing this. It'll take us, it takes us a couple of weeks before we can get around to getting the receptions edited, but that will be up on our YouTube as well. Um, I very much wanna thank Jack again for all his expertise. I think you can tell he really, uh, he, he really does bring a lot of just knowledge and care, but time and talent to curating the exhibition. I really wanna thank the Calvert Marine Museum again for hosting us. Um, we typically do four or five exhibitions a year offsite. Um, this has been our first one since March of 2020. And sometimes it's just nice to get out of the house, so to speak. Uh -huh. sure uh, and so with that, Jack, do you have anything else you want to add? No, just uh, thank you for in inviting me. And, uh, and I couldn't be happier with, with the show. I'll see you there, OK? OK, well, you're always up uh, to figure out a time. To one, one question. Um, do we need to make reservations to come into the museum? Are they? just generally open now or? No, so uh, right now I can invite people in who are sort of related to the shows that are up. In about okay. a month or two, we expect to be able to take reservations, but uh, the university has been very, very tough on me. Hey, and, Jack, I think she means oh, here. Oh, yeah, I, I meant there, yeah. Like oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, so you can make reservations online, but okay. in general, I think you can just show up too. Okay. So. Because it's a, I wanted to, to get down to see the show. I was waiting for my vaccine to take effect <laughs> before I, I drove down. Eileen, Eileen, yeah. I went down with my wife and sister-in-law to drop off my piece and people could just go in. You didn't have to. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, because yeah. I have, yeah, I can... plus, you know, people in Annapolis who live in Annapolis want to meet me down there and I didn't want to steer them wrong. So uh... no, I think it would be good. Well, thank you all for sharing your time and your talent. Um, it's always so nice when you share your art with the public. And at Maryland Federation of Art, we're just thrilled to be able to present it to the community. So I hope you make it down here. I hope you make it to Art on Paper, which is hanging in Circle Gallery right now. Um, it, again, is an extraordinary show. Um, and I hope everybody can stop by and see it. If not, we will be back on a Zoom next Sunday with the reception for Art on Paper. <laughs> So, uh, so thanks so much. And I look forward to seeing you all either virtually on a Zoom sometime or hopefully in person in Circle Gallery. Great, thank, thank you. you.